Welcome to Allie's Attic Show, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is a recording guitarist from Kentucky. Please welcome Dave from Get Calibrated. Hello. Hello. How are you? Happy Monday to you. Yes, happy Monday. I don't know if it's a happy Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> no, I have a thing with Mondays. Um, okay, so Dave, I love your story, and I love the way you chose the name of your, um, I guess, are you a band, or is it just your recording name, Get Calibrated? It's my recording name. Okay. So if you want to take it from here and tell me your journey and tell me how you got the name Get Calibrated, I thought it was something to do with music. And then I was like, wait, no, 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 it's cars. And then, no, it's not. So <laughs> you can tell me. Well, uh, Get Calibrated is really a term that a bunch of us guys used growing up that, uh, hey, uh, you know, if you're mountain biking and you go single track and fall into a tree, um, oh, man, he just got calibrated. <laughs> and I was, it was just something that we said. Um, just so happened that, you know, one night uh, I was playing live and I looked over and saw people doing heroin and various other uh, things that I just couldn't support anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was time for me to get calibrated. Mm -hmm. And that's where this all started. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what it means. Well, it's correcting your life and getting on the right track. I think you're going to start a new saying because I, I love that. Get calibrated. I love it. I absolutely, <laughs> I love the meaning behind it. Um, okay. So when you were in, so you were playing in a band then and you were playing guitar, obviously, right? And now you, so how long ago was it that you started out on your own? Um, 1996. Oh, wow. Maybe. Okay. And yeah, I've been playing since I was four. Wow. Seriously? Straight up. I've got a picture of me uh, playing an acoustic guitar with headphones on at age four. Wow. <laughs> Put a grin across my face. I guess. That is crazy. So what made you decide? I mean, what did somebody just, what, your parents hand you a guitar and say, here, or how did you how did you manage to get a guitar at four and start playing? I was fascinated with it. Uh, my grandma's guitar, uh, which currently is in the shop, being refurbished, uh, she had a 1962K guitar, and I was just fascinated with it. And she gave it to me. Wow. Um, and, you know, she showed me. She played bluegrass and dulcimer and a lot of guitar and banjo and various other things. And, and as I grew up, there were different people that, uh, you know, especially in church, because I grew up in church, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, harmonies and vocals and things. But my grandma uh, gave me the guitar, and I'm like, Okay, let's go with this. And then I found Van Halen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't we all? <laughs> that changed everything. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Van Halen's that, amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it all rolled for me. Okay, so I know in your bio it talks about um, when you were playing in the band and you were doing mostly covers, cover songs. Well, I guess you were doing all kinds of cover songs with classic rock and stuff like that. And you saw the people doing heroin and, you know, drinking and, and just living really bad lifestyles. You turned to God, right? I did. Um, God's always been a part of my life. And I accepted Christ at a very young age. And I'm not ashamed of that. I know it's not the popular thing. And I don't expect everyone to jump on my bandwagon either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I turned to God because, you know, I, I felt like I had done everything in my power to mess his plan up. <laughs> and, you know, here I was in a bar, and it was club night after night, and this bar and that one, and coffee houses and hippies. And, you know, those things are all fine as far as I'm concerned. I personally can't support that. Um, I'm not going to play the music that you are destroying yourself listening to. Uh -huh. uh, I can't play that and watch people do heroin. I can't play that and watch people become alcoholics. Mm -hmm. um, 
I feel like I was put here to play music to lift people, not bring them down. Not bring them down. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it 100%. I'm not going to be in some little gray area. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a really good reason to go. Now, okay, so that's going to, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm putting you on the spot here, but now it just, it piqued my curiosity. So, you know how when um, uh, Metallica came onto the scene and all these like heavy metal rock bands and like Pink Floyd and everybody was saying that these songs um, cause people to do crazy things and they affect them. And then there was the big, no, it doesn't. And it's just, you know, if the child is like that, it's like that, or the person, whatever. Do you believe music influences people? Obviously you must, right? Um, can it? Certainly behind the right, the right musician, it can. Mm -hmm. I think it's a vehicle for a message, whether that message uh, affects a given person. I think it depends on that person that's listening to it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't think it's all bad. I, you know, drums aren't evil. <laughs> uh, Play a record backwards, it's the devil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I listen to Metallica. Mm -hmm. I listen so do I. <laughs> to Sinister Gates. And I listen to Ozzy. I, yeah. just, I just listened to Ozzy this morning. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Randy Rhodes. I love Eddie Van Halen. But just the same, I love Phil Kagey. Yeah. I'm a guitar player. So that's the guitarist that of our day. Um, of my day, maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, Mine too. Mine too. I, that's what I listen to. Okay. You know, I like Eric Johnson just as much as I love Phil Craigley. It's it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it, it depends on the person. And you know what? The reason that, well, I mean, because of, of why you changed your, your path, I wanted to ask that question. Um, I wanted to say, I, I listen to all kinds of music. I have my entire life. I'm a music buff. I hardly watch TV. And I watched a guy listen to Metallica. Calm, calm, calm. And by the time the song was over, he was in a fight. And afterwards, I said to him, like, what happened? Oh, that music just gets to me. And I was like, really? What? And I guess, yeah, you're right. It depends on the person and it depends on if, I guess, they allow it to, right? I guess. I don't know if they're, they allow it necessarily. Um, certainly in the presence of mind-altering uh, substances, people can be led very easily. Uh, I do know that. Yeah. Uh, or misled, however you want to look at it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, music is a vehicle for the message, yeah. and if it's if it's a good message, depending on you know, everybody's got their own thought on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and I just wanted to ask that question, and I mean, it's it's. Yeah. It, it blew me away when I saw it. And I mean, I saw it happen in front of me. And he wasn't on any mind-altering drugs. It just, it got him pumping. He said it just got his adrenaline going. And it just, it blew me uh, away. So I, mean, I was like, wow, okay. That's, that's what rock and roll is. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, from its very roots in the blues, it's about moving. Yeah. Uh, get people moving. Get people dancing. Get people listening. Let's snap fingers and clap hands, or and it, it's the same thing in the gospel arena. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the old Southern gospel or the old hymns uh, coming out of England and Ireland, um, they were built for a certain purpose. Um, there's a calming. You know, you hear a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Catholic mass type of music is very calming and mm -hmm. settling. Mm -hmm. But if, if you played that. In a church service in Georgia on Sunday morning in rural Georgia, <laughs> it would be. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. And I think that's my point. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. I, and that's I, why I, I wanted to ask. All of those things. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I wanted to ask you. You were like, you're like the perfect person to ask. Um, and I dance. I don't fight. I dance. But yeah, it just, it was weird. Okay. So now. I know, like, studio time for any independent artist is hard to get, and it costs yeah. money, um, and you really love collaborating with people and getting to meet people, so you do try to get studio time. I try. Um, I mean, I've got my own studio. Most every guitar player does. They own a PC or a tablet now. They get a studio, you know, and they have a label and all that, but, um, you know, I like to 
just sit down and jam with somebody for turn a mic on and see what happens. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I go down to my buddy's place down the road and we, you know, we go over and eat a pizza. And next thing you know, we got four songs written. Hey, what well, do you want to do with this? Well, let's go over to this church and see if they want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like that. Yeah. Well, but, that's but at awesome. the same time, you know, I, I've been doing a couple of collaborations uh, online this year, which is kind of new for me. I mean, I've been online since Netscape, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I love to collaborate with people because you just never know what somebody's going to bring to the table. Exactly. Exactly. And every time I do it, I learn something. Awesome. And I don't, I don't want to ever stop learning. Yeah, exactly. As soon as I stop learning, I might as well just quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, I agree. Now, um, okay, I was going to blah, 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 blah. Um, now, where do you, like, where do you want to go from here? Like, I know, like, you're an independent artist. Do you want to be signed or do you want to stay independent? I don't really care. <laughs> Good answer. I, mean, I really don't. It sounds stupid because everybody wants signed and everybody wants the big contract. And if, and if, I, if I say I don't want that, that makes me a liar. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm happy where I am. I mean, I'm, I'm living a good life right now. Yeah. I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm very content where I am. I have a great family. Uh, you know, nice house, nothing fantastic, just something, you know. And I, I play guitar. Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to do when I was 15. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You're so, living your dream. Uh, you know, it is what it is for me. But, uh, yeah, you know, the right deal came along for some big record or, you know, go on tour and all that. I, I really don't care. You know, I'd be happy to play a couple of live shows a year and just chill the rest of the time. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe yeah. a little TV deal will come along or something. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I just want to talk about why you don't sing. Just tell everybody, because you told me why you're yeah. just a, a guitarist and you don't sing. Well, you know, I sang a lot growing up. Um, sang, you know, gospel quartet. I sang recently. Um as in last year in a gospel quartet and I have a high voice but as you can tell I have a kind of scratchy voice Mm -hmm. and that comes from years and years of undiagnosed chronic asthma and uh, growing up I live here in a valley um, full of what is left of a steel mill and chemical plants and so forth and um yeah, it really messes with me. Plus, the allergies are awesome in this area. So, um, generally speaking, okay. about six to eight months out of the year, you hear this voice. This is my good voice. Oh, my the goodness. other part of the year, you hear this. Oh, and no. And they to talk to you. Oh, my so, God. So, oh, that's too bad. There's that. Because you have you have a very pleasant voice, so I could imagine hearing it. Like I think it would be very nice to hear. But yeah, that's unfortunate. That's, um, that's the reason I don't sing. No. Yeah, yeah, and I just wanted to touch on that because I knew you told me before the interview, but I just wanted everybody else to hear it. Now, yeah, there's, go ahead. no, go ahead. Sorry. But no, 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 no. <laughs> you there's can, one other you, thing I wanted to mention. Yes, and I'm trying. I'm trying to get some word out. Um, my daughter, who I'm not going to specify her name or mm-hmm. age, but uh, she's had what is called posterior orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. What is that? Yeah. That's a $250 word right there. It's, in short, it's called POTS. And it's a syndrome. There is no cure. There's no, um, it's, it's a collection of symptoms. And it can include, but it is certainly not limited to, and studies are still ongoing. And I invite everyone to go to saudianomiainternational.org. Um, they have a lot of resources there. This affects millions of women and teenage women, uh, girls, anywhere from age 30 to 65, 70. Um, after my daughter was diagnosed, uh, we 
we've met 15, 20 just here in my little town. Um, and the symptoms are um, increased heart rate, uh, lack of blood flow, passing out, um, sickness as in nausea, mm-hmm. um, sweating for a reason. And basically these people, in some cases, my daughter's lucky and I, I'm blessed and I praise Christ for that because but there are people that are very, that are 15. Oh my God. And to, you know, with that comes a huge, humongous mental and anxiety uh, situation because now you have a 15 year old kid who's struggling to get through school and they got all the pressures that we had plus 10 yeah. um, you know, times 10 and uh, you know throw the kid that passes out and if anyone's listening and you're that kid that passes out I want you to know this first of all I love you I love everyone mm-hmm. that's listening um, and even those that aren't I love you all but for those of you that are listening that have this syndrome there's the, the general treatment is salt water and steroids and so forth a lot of drugs a lot of trials but i want you guys to know that you're special and when i say you're special i'm not singling you out you're special to your parents you're special to your friends yeah i know they come and go because you're teenagers mm-hmm. or maybe you're in your 20s 30s i don't know yeah you may be bedridden, you may have headaches, you may get lightheaded, you may can't get out of bed, you can't get to the restroom, I can't. But I want you to know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, there's hope, there's a cure that's coming, mm-hmm. it's being worked on in England. People around the country in the United States and Canada are having pots days to raise money for you folks. Okay. You hear my dog? Yes, I can hear your dog, that's okay. <laughs> But, you know, not, I'm not making light of it. I don't want you guys to know that you are loved, that we do care about you. You're not going through this alone. And reach out for help. Okay. I mean, there are tons, millions of dancers. You mentioned you used to dance. Yeah. Um, not uh, professionally. You yeah. still do. Yeah. <laughs> Around my living room, but yeah. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things is hyperflexibility. We used to call it being double-jointed. And... I want you guys to know that you're not alone in this and it affects us as parents. Um, all you parents out there, listen to this. We love our kids more than anything in the world. We do anything for them. And if we could take that syndrome and just have it for you, we would, Yeah. but we can't. And it's hard on us. So I want you guys all to know that we love you. There are resources for you. Go to this audio no man. This autonomia, D-Y-S, autonomia, international, dot org, O-R-G. There are resources there for you. There are local resources for you. Just look and ask. Ask questions. It may be as simple as say, taking a salt tablet every day. Yeah. Or goes on two bottles of water when you wake up. Okay. And uh, I, I just wanted to mention that. Well, I'm glad you did. And Dave, if you can send me in an email um, the exact name of the disease and that website, because I'll put it up with your interview so that people know where to go to find resources and to find... I know I have a disease. It's not POTS. It's RA. And it's uh, autoimmune disease where it affects my entire body. And I found... The more I found out about it and the more I found out how many people, you know, you know, had it and found people that have it. And, you know, I could sit down and talk to them and talk about my symptoms and stuff and it helps. So any kind of resources for anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, so send me that in an email so I can put it up on my website so people can find it. Um, yeah, especially people that are listening that have this or know somebody that does have this. I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, okay. So to get back to this, 
if you had so Dave, you've been doing this for a while now, and you did it with the rock, you know, genre. And now you're doing it this way. Um, if you had any kind of advice to give a new artist that was just starting out, or even one that's out there, what do you think you'd tell them? Hmm. Well, I think the first thing that I would say would be to be true to yourself first. Make the music that you love. And the rest will work itself out. Um, if you're doing what you love, then you like what you do. Um, and if you're making music that you like, then who cares what everybody else thinks? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's genres for everything. Everybody want to put a label on it. Doesn't matter. The, the, all of that doesn't matter. Make the music and be yourself. And if you do those two things, you'll be content where you are. That's great advice. That is great advice. Thank you. Um, what two songs are we going to hear from you? Um, I believe it's Give Me a Break and Decision. That is correct. That is correct. Now, you can purchase your music online, right? Where most people purchase right. their music. Um, as well, you can find um, Get Calibrated on all social media. Um, First off, I want to say, give your daughter my best. And as a mom, <laughs> as a mom that, I mean, you just about had tears. <laughs> I just can't imagine. Um, so just give her all my love and tell her that, you know, I'll pray for her. And I hope that she gets, well, not, I mean, there's no <laughs> cure, but, you know, hopefully the cure comes soon, like you said. And um, I want to also say, Dave, thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing your story. And talking about everything that we talked about and I loved it and I could talk to you forever but I will uh, let you go because your dogs sound like they're going crazy <laughs> but um what? <laughs> what what did you say um but thank you so much for coming on my show and anything new happens um let me know and if your daughter ever wants to come on I have Allie's Attic Awareness um, if she wants to come on and talk about that, she can come on and talk about it, or you can come on as a parent and we can get even more information out there for people that are, you know, um, suffering from this disease. So yeah, that's an option to you as well. But yeah, any new songs, any, you know, you start winning awards, <laughs> let me know. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. Very special to be here. Awesome. And keep checking the website because you never know what kind of surprises you'll find in my attic. Everyone have a great Monday. Cheers. Cheers.